Many pilots struggle with weather knowledge and decision making, but this is an incredibly crucial aspect to aviation and flying. The good news? Building your weather knowledge and decision making doesn't have to be difficult. With a strategic plan, you can build this knowledge and confidence. When I was a student pilot, I didn't feel especially confident with my weather knowledge. And while some of that was due to lack of experience, I've learned over time that there are some real steps that you can take to improve this and make progress. If you check out my video here, you can see how my lack of weather knowledge could have resulted in a really bad situation. So I'm sharing three simple and strategic steps that you can make to improve your weather knowledge and confidence when it comes to aviation related decision making. The first step you need to take is practice a daily weather briefing. Sometimes when I get a new student, I'll ask, hey, when do you get weather briefings? And invariably the answer is, well, before I fly. Okay, that's great, but what if you fly once a week or once every two weeks? You're only briefing the weather once or twice a month, maybe four times a month. Weather happens every day. And the more that we practice looking at the weather and figuring out, hey, what decision would I make based on what's going on today, the better off you'll be. So to practice getting a weather briefing, use one of those FAA approved sources of weather. This could be 1-800-weatherbrief.com, aviationweather.gov, or the weather in your electronic flight bag. So for a flight, Garmin pilot, etc. Alongside that weather briefing, you can pull up the AeroSafe weather brief checklist available for free to you at gilbertaviation.com slash AeroSafe. So get your weather briefing through that FAA approved source and use the weather brief checklist to guide you through it to make sure that you've covered all the essential areas to help you make a good decision. So again, if you're only checking weather on the days that you fly, you're missing ample opportunities to practice looking at the weather. And I've learned one of the best ways to become more comfortable with the weather and confident in my decision making is through experience. The more you practice, the more natural the flow will become. And in fact, you might become so good at it, you might become the local aviation guy in your group. The one who everyone goes to with questions because you track the weather patterns and you know what to expect. The second thing you can do to become more comfortable with weather is to fly with a more experienced pilot in challenging weather. Now, while you're doing this, you wanna be very mindful to observe how this pilot operates. You wanna see about the decisions that they make and how they process information and make safety-minded decisions in the weather. You wanna observe how this experienced pilot mitigates risks in real-time weather. Pay attention to the decisions that they make how they adapt their plan based on the weather and the way it changes, and the factors that they prioritize to ensure a safe flight. Flying with someone who's more experienced gives you the benefit of being a little bit more relaxed because you're not the one in charge. You aren't the one having to make the decisions. So in this position, you can observe and see how they mitigate risk and then take those skills into your own flying. When I was learning to fly the TBM, the first hundred or more hours I had were with a safety pilot. I got to take the aircraft in situations that I would never feel comfortable doing so. But I got to see how these really experienced pilots flew this very capable airplane. And I got to be there and experience it as well and understand that I could push myself safely beyond what I already knew. We took the aircraft in all sorts of situations, flying through cold fronts, flying to minimums and having to go around. We went through really bad turbulence, not exactly storms, but weather that I would never have considered flying through. Now, a lot of that has to do with, you know, the capability of a much more experienced pilot and the capability of a much, a much more capable airplane, what you can do with it. So flying in the TBM with a much more experienced pilot and it's a much more capable airplane, I was really able to observe how they mitigate risk, how they make decisions, and I could really also see what the airplane was capable of. And so in that way, I got more confident with weather because I had the experience and the understanding and then could take that into my own flying. The main point here is that a good pilot is always learning and it is much easier to learn from others. By flying with a more experienced pilot, you'll gain insights that you couldn't learn from textbooks or years of watching YouTube videos. Really get in the moment, get with an experienced pilot in a more capable airplane. And this is kind of like that video I made about landing in a thunderstorm, right? I wanted to share that experience with you so that you could learn from it and not make the same mistake as me. 
The last step to really improve your weather knowledge and confidence is to get into the resources that are available to you. I made a whole video about weather resources that you might not have heard of, and you can check that out here. A really great resource that's in that video is the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration's Jetstream Online Learning Program. While this isn't tailored exactly to pilots, weather theory is weather theory, no matter how you apply it. If you're applying it to, uh, you know, you're a farmer or a gardener or you're a pilot and you're operating in the atmosphere, the weather theory is the same. So check out NOAA's Jetstream for more information on that. You can also look at the Aviation Weather Handbook. This is published by the FAA, and this is a much more aviation or pilot-oriented specific weather knowledge and weather theory handbook. And then, of course, you can check out AeroSafe's weather analysis briefing videos. Those are exactly how I would walk through an actual real-life weather briefing for a cross-country flight plan. So you can check those out and follow along and think about what decisions you would make based on what is showing up in the atmosphere. The more you know about how the weather works and what the weather theory is, the more confident you'll be in understanding the patterns and really having an idea of the kind of weather that you can expect. And this is not just about passing your check ride. This is about becoming the best pilot that you can be. So also by learning more about weather theory, you can have a better big picture understanding of what's going on through the whole atmosphere. So for example, in the weather analysis videos that I do, the first thing we do is look at the surface analysis chart to see where the pressure and frontal systems are. Looking at that alone, you can pretty much figure out what the hazards might be across the whole country. And so ideally you would get to that point where you can just quickly look at a surface analysis and understand the potential hazards that would exist because you've incorporated weather briefings into a part of your routine. Maybe you've flown into some adverse weather with a more experienced pilot, and now you're integrating a deeper level of knowledge by doing some self-study. So there we have it, three simple, easy steps that you can take to improve your weather knowledge and decision-making, right? First thing, practice a daily weather briefing. This should only take 10 to 15 minutes, maybe longer when you first start as you get the flow and the rhythm. The next thing you wanna do is fly with a more experienced pilot in some adverse weather. And I mean, get someone who is ex as experienced as you can. For example, one of the safety pilots I had in the TBM was a retired UPS Czech airman. I think you'd be hard pressed to find a pilot who's more experienced than that. The more experience they have, the better, especially if they flew professionally and operated in a crew environment. Then you can really take some safety-minded activities and safety-minded practices into your own flying. And then the last strategy we talked about, the last step we talked about was improving your weather theory by doing some self-study, looking at all of those free resources that are available to you from the government, from the FAA, and really diving into those to understand what's going on. Don't forget, you can get the AeroSafe Weather Brief Checklist for free at gilbertaviation.com slash AeroSafe. And if you're enjoying these videos and the uh, value that they bring to you as a pilot who's aspiring to be better, I'd encourage you to check out my Patreon and support the channel there. So remember, weather is one of the most important aspects of flying, and it's the one thing that we have no control over. The control that we do have in regards to weather is whether or not we take off. And then if we do, what are the risks involved and how are we gonna mitigate those risks? So the more you build your weather knowledge, the more confident you'll be and the more safe you'll be in your decision making. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like and subscribe and ring the notification bell. And we'll see you next time.